Eventually, I befriended Jimmy Valiant, Johnny Valiant, and Bobby Heenan. And those days at the AWA, Vern was really smart. He, he was like Stu Hart, you know, it was big kayfabe in those days. When the AWA came into Winnipeg or whatever town, the heels would always stay separate. You never see a baby face in the heel. You never see Jim Bronzel. Or staying at the same hotel. They'd always stay at different places, right, Bob? Yeah, and, and they were at the Marlboro Hotel, but they would stay. they put one group in the top floor and the other guys in the bottom floor or a different hotel a lot of times. When they came in, many times they asked me to pick them up at the airport, come in, and both on the same flight, obviously, but you would never see them coming through the security at the same time. Major k -fabe. Anyway, I got to know all these heels, and I got to know Bobby Heenan. They used to call me up, invite me down to the Marlboro and go and drink and all that stuff. And I remember one time I had a little grocery store in Winnipeg. I had just got over, a, I had a really serious illness and had this job. At, they used to call me at the grocery grocery store. And remember, uh, Johnny Belling called me up one night. He says, you know, Bob, no disrespect to the Marlboro Hotel, but it's kind of boring. You know, well, Winnipeg's a boring place anyway. So he says, uh, Bobby Heenan and myself and Bobby Duncan and Jack Lanza wanted to know, we heard that you used to work in a hotel that had a strip bar in it. Are there any good stripper places? You know, we go back to the Marlboro Hotel. It's kind of boring. And you go in the bar and the heels are on one side and the baby's on the other side. And I said, listen, I'll call this lady friend of mine up. I had a part-time job at this hotel called the Airport Hotel and uh, in the basement of the hotel there was a place called the Constellation Room. There was a lady named Gladys Balsley who she ran all the strippers in Winnipeg. So I called Gladys up and I said, listen, I've got some wrestlers who want to come down. Wow, wow, great, bring them down. So I took all the heels down to the Constellation Room and it was a Thursday night that they come to Winnipeg and usually they were pretty dead on the Thursday night at that strip place but once Heenan and company came in and uh, it was a sellout every that you couldn't they were lined up to get into the constellation room oddly enough uh, Gladys Balsley she was such a big fan she started her own wrestling promotion eventually I knew Bobby for two or three years and liked to drink on and off you saw him when he came to town yeah he called me up there's a place called Grand Forks North Dakota and halfway between Minneapolis and Winnipeg and I, I'd be in my store and I Bobby Heenan would call me up hey Bob uh, Bobby here we're coming we're driving up to Winnipeg let's get together tomorrow can we still go to that strip bar? They come in and no problem. And uh, I got to know them and we had a lot of fun. And I was pretty much a fan. But I, I knew what was going on, but I didn't ever ask much. But uh, they were so darn nice to me. And I'm at my store one time and, and it was right by the Winnipeg Arena. Every time they came in, they'd stop by the store and get their mix or smokes or cigars or whatever they're going to get. So I remember Bobby Heenan came in one time and he says, uh, do you work here every day? I said, yeah, every day in my store. And he said, Bob, uh, why don't you come on the road with us one time? So, said, well, I, I got to run my store. It's, I arranged to have somebody work on a Friday and I got on Frontier Airlines with the boys and flew down to Denver to the McNichol Sports Arena the next night. We're walking into the McNichol Sports Arena. There's Jimmy and Johnny and Bobby Duncan and all the heels coming in and there's Bobby Heenan and me are side by side. At the old McNichol Sports Arena in Denver, they had all the marks and like, fans were all behind this great big fence. A couple of years earlier, I lost all my teeth. I had some radiation from a really bad thing called Hodgkin's disease, but I got better. So I lost all my teeth. Eh? So I'm walking through with Bobby Heenan and uh, some guy yells out to Bobby Heenan, hey Heenan, who's that guy with you? And Bobby kind of nudged me. He says, take your teeth out and grow at the guy, so I pulled my dentures out and I, I showed my gums and I growled at the fan. <laughs> it was a good time. Went to back to the hotel. It was next night. I flew over to Minneapolis. Actually, went over to Burden's office. They actually said we're going to try to get you on as a referee. You're Canadian, but we'll figure that out somehow. And we'd love to have you join us and help us down here. And we'll get you as a job as a referee. So you've been hanging out with Bobby on and off here, right? Yeah, I've been hanging out with him for two or three years. And Jimmy Bellant, and it's funny guys like Jimmy Bellant and Lanza. And I was in New York City a couple of years ago. Uh, WrestleMania, and I'm going to the WrestleCon, and I hear some guy yell out, Bob Johnson, and I, said, I don't know anybody in New York City. Turn around, is Jim, Jimmy Bellion. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy comes up, gives me a great big hug. My brother, Bob, my brother. I'm walking through the MGM one time at the Cauliflower Alley Club, and I hear this guy yelling out my name, Bob Johnson. And here's Jimmy Bellant. 
Bob, my brother, another big hug. So several guys like uh, Paul, the butcher of Vachon, I knew him and always saw him at Cauliflower and he remembered me and Maurice Vachon remembered me and Jim Brunzel remembered me and even Jack Lanza. I used to see Jack Lanza at all the WWE events in Winnipeg and he was uh, an agent and he, Bob, my man, how are you doing? How's it going, brother? And they always call you brother, you know, stuff like that. And anyway, I think a buzzer should go off every time the word brother is said at the Cauliflower Alley. That's just yeah. my opinion. 1975, I guess, is the last time I saw Bobby Heenan in Winnipeg. And I had left to go to Calgary in 76. And I eventually joined the Hart family. But I had a job as a manager of a theater down there. And we had a show one night called Paradise Alley, a movie with Sylvester Stallone and Terry Funk. And it was a wrestling love, movie. Love and, it. One uh, of my favorites. Yeah. So anyway, those days, there's no DVDs or uh, video cassettes or anything. Uh, videos were just sort of coming out. I had told the manager at the theater that I uh, was involved a little bit with the wrestling in Winnipeg. And he says, listen, we have a guy, and he's a big promoter of Stampede Wrestling called Stu Hart. And maybe we can do a promotion on Paradise Alley. So one thing led to another. I went out and met Stu and I met all his sons and I got to meet Ross and Bruce and Smitty and Brett and everybody, Owen, and it became an instant friendship and I eventually went to work for Stu t- booking all his spot shows. And this is in the 80s. Go ahead about 10 years later. I'm down at the Cauliflower Alley Club. I see Bobby Heenan down there. So I walk up to Bobby Heenan. Bobby, how's it going, my man? Who are you? I don't know you. I said, remember Denver when I took my teeth out well, I don't know what you're talking about I had never met you in my life I said you don't have to work me and I, I had already been working for Stu for 10 years so I knew all the inside stuff and I said buddy you're working me don't don't have to work me you know and he says I, I've never been to Winnipeg I don't know I'm what hotel? The uh, Marlboro Hotel? I don't know. The strippers? I said, what? Uh, didn't, don't you remember going to the strip? I don't know. I, I don't watch strippers and stuff like that. Anyway, that's at the Cauliflower Club. I said, okay, well, that's fine. He wants the part of the rib. That's a lot of guys used to love ribbing guys. I don't know if they do that anymore. But anyway, now go ahead. The next year, I go to Cauliflower Alley Club again. Bobby Heenan, how's it going, brother? Who are you? I said, I met you last year at the Cauliflower Alley Club. And then I know you from Winnipeg. And I don't know you. I've never met you in my life. And all this bullshit. So anyway. (laughs) Now, I said, okay, well, that's, that's that's okay. I don't care, right? I just... It must have been the cologne you were wearing or something, Bob. It must have been. I don't know. If it, Maybe he didn't recognize you. You had your teeth in. Yeah, I had them. Yeah, but anyway... Maybe uh, that's it. Surely he could recognize my voice or something, but anyway, go ahead a few years later, and uh, I go down to the WrestleMania. The Hart family were all invited down to the WrestleMania, and they were on Is that, that the one in Phoenix? In Phoenix, yeah. So I ended up... I said, listen, I wouldn't mind joining it. I, I end up paying my own airfare, but they, uh, I get down to Phoenix, and I know Bruce Ross, we had two or three rooms, so I shared a room with everybody, and I ended up getting a ticket to the, the whole works. They treated me like a million bucks, but anyway, we're at this place called the Wyndham Hotel, and the only people who were allowed in that hotel, you have to be with WWE. They didn't have any public or anything in there, so I'm, I'm waiting at the elevator one time, and lo and behold, my old friend Bobby Heenan comes up with his wife. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby, how's it going? Uh, Bob Johnson. Who are you? I don't know you. I never met you in my life. And I said, I, well, I said, don't you remember the Cauliflower Alley Club? What's the Cauliflower Alley Club? And I said, well, I met you there unless it was a different Bobby Heenan. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I've never been to the Las Vegas to the Cauliflower Alley Club. So the the door is open in the in the elevator. I walk in, and there's Bobby Heenan and his wife and me. And silence. And about 10 seconds later, I said, Bobby, great to see you, man. And uh, is this your wife here? And who the hell is this? I have no idea who you are. So I'm leaving the elevator. And remember, his wife said, Bobby, that man knows you. He's such a nice man. He knows you. How come you didn't say hello to him? And and Bobby says, hell if I know who he is. Go ahead a few more years back at the Cauliflower Alley Club. And I'm sitting in the buffet. And I got a really good picture of Bobby Heenan giving the finger to everybody in this picture. I said, Bobby. Yeah, he Heenan. wasn't doing well at that point. No, and I, no, and I said, no. I said, Bobby, I hope things are working. I hope you're going to get better or something like that. And he comes up. So I walk up to him and he says, Bob Johnson, man, I worked you for 25 years. <laughs> what? 
And he says, I remember you. You fell for that rib. for tw- It was a 25-year rib. I loved it. You know, and he shook my hand. And, uh, Brilliant. So that was Brilliant. Funny. It was funny. only until he couldn't contain it anymore. He was diminished there in the wheelchair. Now, when yeah. he talked to you, was he talking through his wife? Because his wife could understand everything that he was saying. It was amazing. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, you know, he spoke. He was sitting with his wife at the buffet there. Didn't talk a lot. But he and I talked, Bob Johnson, what a great rib. But he, he knew me when I went up there. That was a, one of the great, uh, pretty good story, old Bobby Heenan and I, and then, and then he passed away. But You know what that means? You're talking about Bobby Heenan. You're talking about our Don Rickles of wrestling, essentially. You're talking about a giant here. He's showing how much he loves you. That's what they always say. In the business back in the day, as we all know, he used to rib the young guys. Hopefully, the young guys that you liked, you know, not the ones that you were trying to scare away or get rid of that's how i look at it anyway he was really showing you like hey man i think you're awesome that's a great story yeah, bobby was a really cool guy i remember always so darn nice to me and uh, back in winnipeg and-